Hey guys, Scott here with a new video for you. Today's video, I'm going to show you how to fix this huge dent in the side of the tank. Normally I wouldn't fix something this big, but this is a pretty rare tank now. It's a 2000 to 2003 carbureted tank. You can always tell the carbureted tank because they don't have the hole on the top. They got the bracket for the dash. So this is a pretty large dent. You can tell it's been uh, this way for a while. I used to pull these out, uh, but I did have a couple come back on me. They start showing bubbles about six months later. Uh, even though they pressure checked, uh, they, we still had an issue. So I've done about 40 of these tanks at least. Maybe, this would be the extreme dent that I would fix. Uh, I always tell the customer up front too that I do not pull this out. I fill it with uh, uh, Duraglass or Everglass and then I skim coat it with Bondo. So I'm going to show you how I do this. Uh, first off, let's go through the materials and everything I use, tools. First you want to make sure you have a particle mask. Uh, it's important that dust is uh, nasty. So from the Bondo, the Everglass and the paint. Uh, this is a aggressive DA, 3 8 orbit. It's a Dynabraid, 6 inch pad. Uh, notice the soft pad works great on tanks and fenders. Uh, then we got Everglass here. You can use Duraglass, Everglass, whatever you have will work good. Don't use all Bondo. Just uh, the Everglass will speed up the process, make a more durable repair. And uh, like I said, I've done many of these way back. I haven't pulled a dent out for probably 10 years or so. Now, if there's, on the newer tanks, there's a big hole at the top. Uh, this one obviously doesn't, like I mentioned. Uh, you can beat some of that dent out, but there's no way of getting inside the tank on that one. So as far as sandpaper, should take one piece of 40 grit. What I'll do is feather the edges once I grind it. I got my angle angle grinder uh, 40 grit I believe it is three inch disc I got three 80 inch or 80 grit six inch pieces of paper and uh, that's pretty much all I will need soft block works great on tanks it's a 3m pad I sorry I forget the part number but I'll figure that out I'll put that in my description below so what we're gonna do is I'm going to start grinding the side here and I want to make sure I have a super large area so I want to go at least an inch and a half to two inches all the way around so I'll go ahead and start grinding this and uh, then I'll feather the edges I want to make sure I get all the paint and decal out of here too so make sure that Everglass adheres very good so I will start grinding So till then. Okay, I got this all ground down. Obviously I did a lar uh, larger area than the inch and a half I told you about. Uh, there's a couple dents back here, so I just connected the two areas and pretty much stripped the side. If you watch my video on how to strip a roof, if you got the, uh, uh, the buffers converted to a stripper, that works good too. If you're gonna strip the whole tank, you could do it that way, even doing the side. Or if you got a five inch grinder, this is a three inch. It took me about, uh, probably about four or five minutes to do. Overall, this dent will probably take me about an hour, hour and a half tops. So what I'm gonna do now, I got my 80 grit on the DA all set. I'm gonna go around, feather this area. Okay, now the reason I do that is because if you get a little bit of Bondo over on the edge here, if you paint this black or a dark color, what happens down the road, even light colors would do this, is it'll soak in and you'll see this edge. So if you feather it out real good, which once I stop this video camera, I'm gonna 
uh, do a better job but you want it feathered like this just in case you get some bondo over there so which does happen so what I'm gonna do now on the top here it's a little bit crowned so I brought my hammer out you can see how flat this so this is gonna be a hard dent to fix but like I said hour hour and a half so this is crowned just a little bit right here so what I'm gonna do is hit this a couple times and that should take care of that so I'm gonna feather this edge better and I'm going to duraglass this or everglass it and this back here will wait once I get this front area ready for bondo I'll bondo the whole area these two dents back here and this bigger one but I'll have this pretty much shaped by the time I put the bondo on there so I'm gonna cut off right now and when I come back I should have it smeared or I will be smearing and uh, show you how I do that okay I got my Everglass all ready to stir up here put the hardener in there you always want to stir not fold it over try to eliminate those air pockets So I like using a paint paddle to start with. Okay, then I'll use Bondo Spreader. Stir it around. Now, on your first coat, you want to make sure, you want to try to eliminate air pockets. So you want to smear it in there. Don't build it up all at once. And you also want to try to shape this. Why you're spreading it. You can see how smooth it's going on. Down here in Florida, it's probably 100 degrees, so I'm lucky it hadn't started hardening yet. Okay, that, that's a good first spread. In fact, that might just do it. So from here on out, I'll probably use Bondo. So we'll see how this works out. And I'm going to show you a little trick once this hardens. I'll have the camera back zoomed in on this and I'll show you what I do after this. It really sp speeds up on repairing a big dent like this. So I appreciate you guys watching. So I'll be back soon. One thing I wanted to show you on this tank and I've seen on Harley tanks through the years. You can see right there where the clear coat's be on. Well, look underneath there. You can see it's glossy. So I've seen what happened. Uh, Harley has done before is if there's a flaw in the paint job or sometimes when they put the decals on the side which this i believe is a night train probably 2003 or so is they'll just uh clear coat it put the decals on not, no sanding and then uh, re-clear it again so this is a bear to feather out you can see it's kind of soft even but yeah it's shiny underneath there i notice on the cbo sometimes they'll repaint them like six different times too so uh, you know, Harley quality looks good from the outside, but sometimes underneath the paint job, there's, uh, you know, you can see different layers and shiny areas and stuff like that. So anyway, back to this dent. We're ready to grind away. Yes, that's the tip I'm going to show you is I don't sand these. I grind them. So basically, you want to become a sculptor here. So what I do, I did show you the three inch grinder, but I decided to bring out the five inch uh, I forget what grit this is, but it's fairly coarse. Probably uh, 40 grit, maybe, maybe 24. Uh, this will really chew it up versus the three inch. Usually, I do use the three inch grinder, but this is a bigger spot. I I muttered it high and big. So what I do is, like I said, that's this. That's my tip to you: is grind this, but you gotta sculpt it. Just don't grind it and make it make it flat again 
you want to make it round. So what I do, I start with the, the outside edges first. I work around here, and then I, I slowly sculpt it. So keeping it round, moving the grinder so it is round. You know, you don't want a flat spot in there. You already had a flat spot. The idea is to make this round. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut away again. I'm going to go ahead and grind this. I'll come back. I'll show you what it looks like after I grind it. And as you can see, I'll be grinding the edges of the paint again. So I will go over with the DA once I get this done. Probably 40 grit. And then we'll bondo it. So I'll be back soon. Probably take me about, uh, probably about four or five minutes with this five inch grinder. So I'll be back soon. Okay, as you can see, I got this all ground down. It's nice and round. There's still just a little bit of a flat spot there, but the Bondo will take care of that. Uh, I ground it down. I feathered the edges again. One thing you want to do, especially with Everglass and Fairglass, on this is a raw air pocket. Hold it firm. I got the air that I got to get. Make sure you get all air pockets out. So I got my Bondo all set. So what we're going to do, we want to smear this on as good as possible. Again, stir it. Don't flip it over. I'm trying to eliminate air pockets. This is Z-Grip uh, Bondo. I believe it's Z-Grip. So it's nice and creamy. Air pockets are pretty minimal. Again, it's real hot out down here in Tampa area. So we want to stir it up real good. First coat smeared in there. I also got this fender over here I want to do. I'm smearing it in real good. Get those air pockets filled up in the Everglass. Build it up now. See this spot right here where it's bare metal? I'll build that up to nest this on. Put it on smooth as possible. If you put it on rough, of course, you're going to have to uh, do a lot of sanding. But the smoother you get it, the easier it is to work. I'm just barely pulling that through there. Okay, get this in over here on the fender. Now, on the fenders, most of the time, in fact, I think every time all the time you if there's a dent on there you can beat it out from the uh, underside get that as good as you can of course we got the dents back here starting to harden on me almost forgot these little guys so i definitely will be smearing this one more time so uh one more after this should definitely do it right now i'm at about a half hour so and uh you know the five inch grinder did help again you can use the three inch grinder though so that'll help now what I'll do next is take a 40 grit DA and then I'll shape it like I did grind it so I'll come back shortly and then I'll show you how I shape this and get it even more rounder got to eliminate that flat spot so you don't want to keep sanding it so it's flat dings on tanks are a little different than when you work on flat metal so like on doors or something like that on a car so you gotta you gotta be a sculptor. So you want to keep this round. So I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, the bondo's all hard. Let it sit for about five minutes. Tops down here in Florida. Again, it's hotter than heck out here. 40 grit disc, aggressive DA, uh, 3 8 orbit, I believe. Dynabrade. So what we're gonna do is the same tip that I told you about doing the edges first. We gotta sculpt this. We just don't want to keep sanding. So. <laughs> Do the outside first. Should be wearing a particle mask, but you wouldn't be able to hear me. So.
seat. I haven't touched this. <laughs> If you have a finesse DA, it's just not going to work. That's, that's a big pitch, a big orbit. So look it up on DynaBraid. The DynaBraid website. Two by four on my other bench. I got four, four by fours work a lot better than two by four. If you work on motorcycles, I would definitely suggest you get some four by fours. I usually wrap them with uh, not bubble wrap, but foam wrap, and then put some paper around there. Work straight. Hold up, tank. Okay, as you can see what I did was coat this with uh, a very thin coat of icing. Uh, it's very smooth, it's good for pinholes. I just coat it, it's very easy to sand too. So basically what I did was just uh, to do this, just to fill very minor pinholes, or very few. Again, you gotta make sure you blow this off real good, the Bondo, just to, uh, you know, visualize or see if you have any uh, pinholes. I really didn't see too many, but I just wanted to do this uh it's a good last coat just to finalize things i start with 80 grit and then i finish this with 180 and it should be good to go right now it's 10 till 5. i believe i started this at 345. so of course i had one customer and i also did this rear fender so realistically like i said hour and 15 minutes hour and a half somewhere around there so I'm gonna sand this down real good. I'm gonna prime it, 2K prime it, with my high-tech primer. Uh, and then they should be good to go. This is getting a pretty basic paint job, just all black. So it should come out real nice. You can see there's no more crown, no more dent. So I will take one more segment after this to show you uh, once it's sanded, or once it's primed and uh, sanded then, so. It's just now five o'clock. I got this all set. So I got it 180'd, all pinholes gone, everything's feathered. So I even had time to strip the decal from the other side. I still got 180 that side. I'll probably prime the whole tank here. So I'll sand it real good with 180 and prime it. So I like priming over 180 uh, versus 80 grit scratches. A uh, couple things to note is when you saw me going like a madman earlier, uh, I do that when I have larger areas uh, with the DA. I do push hard on the DA when I have it revved that high. If I don't have it pushed hard, it's going to rev that uh, DA pretty high. So, But when I did put the icing on here, I did turn the DA down because it's more finesse. You know, I was just final sanding it, so I did have it down quite a bit lower. And also, I did take that soft block that I showed you earlier, this block here. I did this works great around corners this area here you could use a soft block or a hard block if you had to uh, but I it came out very nice so I didn't have to use a hard block so again it helps helps you to uh, uh, the DA to sculpt this dent that's the key when you do these dents is to remember to sculpt these you can't just sand it like a normal panel so hopefully this video has helped you. Uh, I may have one more segment. If not, I'll have a couple pictures to show you after primer and probably after paint too. So, uh, you know, till then, 
I appreciate you watching. Thank you. Okay, we're in the booth now. I just got this tank all primed. It came out real nice. Look down the side, it's nice and straight. I did prime it with about uh, probably four coats of 2K primer, the high tech primer that I talked about that I like. I like using it fairly inexpensive. Uh, requires a catalyst, of course, so uh, fairly inexpensive. So earlier I showed you that clear coat that was peeling away. But when I sanded this, I pretty much did take all that. It was not feathering, so I pretty much had to take all that off. I 180 the complete tank. So when it came off really easy, uh, it took me about probably you know, 20 minutes, half hour. Strip all that off. So, and also, it's the next day, the following day, after I did the body work. When you have that much body work, it's a good idea to let it sit overnight. Or if it's sunny out, it was towards the end of the day, so I pulled the bench in. But if it's sunny out, you can cook it out in the sun because I had so much material on there. So, I wanted to let it cure before I sandwiched it underneath this primer. So it's a good idea to do that when you got a lot of, a lot of body work on there. So also I'm going to show you a little trick. So I know they sell spray can guide coat. What I do, I got a gun solely. It's an LPH 400. Doesn't matter what you use. You can use a cheapo gun for this, harbor spray or whatever. But uh, it's regular black, one to one. Don't over reduce it. I used to over reduce it, but I found it really don't have to do that. So anytime you got a lot of body work. You should guide coat everything. Guide coat basically lets you know when you're blocking your highs and lows. If it stays there, it's it's a low. If it goes away real quick, of course it's a high. So what I do is turn down the trigger a little bit. Pretty much a regular fan. Hold it back. Even though there wasn't any body work on this side, I'll go ahead and guide coat it. So, this will also show you pinholes if you got pinholes. So, that's that. So, we're going to let this cure probably overnight. Block it out. The sun's not out, so usually I can cook it and uh, I can possibly paint this at the end of the night. But I'm not going to do that, so we'll just let it sit. No hurry on this. I did get the fender done, that's all primed, guide coated. I wanted to show you something else. This has nothing to do with that job, but I just took this in. In fact, it came in uh, late yesterday, and there was a dent right here, and I told the customer I'll do my best to save the Eagle, because this is not a decal. This is a decal, this is like a stencil, it's sprayed on, of course with the stripes too. I planned on respraying the stripes, but I, I luckily, save those two but the dent went up it buttered up the eagle's nose the beak so but i saved it i did the body work right here i put multiple layers of tape so i'll show you how i did this so basically went around here and i tried to make it like a 16th of an inch higher so just multi-layer it and then here's the tip, here's a key. Put one more piece on there. Same with up here. Lay your mud. Immediately build up that mud. You wanna make sure it's curved. Immediately pull this tape off and this tape here. And that way it's not bridged on the tape. And also, I just primed it. So just a little guide coat. It's so small I really didn't have to do that, but I had the gun out anyway. But what I did was take lacquer thinner because I was buttered up right against the pinstripe. You don't want a nasty edge to sand down because when you're sanding down the edge of the primer, you're also sanding down the edge of the stripe. So I took lacquer thinner, soaked the rag in it, and just wiped it right there. There's no edge on there now. So I wiped that, and also this right along here. This will still be tricky to spray. I'm glad it's black, so that's a little more forgiving. But overall, this customer is going to be extremely pleased because there's no way of re re uh, creating that. So anyway, I'll be spraying this tank. This is the end of this video because we get into the painting part and the blocking part. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. Appreciate you watching.